Thanks very much, Brian, and uh, apologies because I am a little infected, but uh, hopefully this will not be too painful for um, either of us. Um, can I start uh, by thanking the college for inviting me here to speak with you today. Uh, I'm, sh I'm sure that you'll agree with me that the, uh, the conference to date, or thus far, has, has really been outstanding. So well done to the college. I'd like to uh, share with you an experience which I really think enabled me and allowed me to get a glimpse and uh, an, an appreciation of the real meaning of the power of now. The experience that I will recount to you also reflects my career pathway and my leadership journey uh, as a nurse in many respects. All right, so um, how many people here have heard of the Oxfam Trail Walker? Hands up. Excellent, okay, so a few hands, uh, a few vertical nods and a few horizontal nods. Well, the Oxfam Trail Walker uh, is a global phenomenon. It began in 1981 uh, as a military training ex exercise for the elite Queen's Gurkhas Signals Regiment in Hong Kong. It's since grown into one of the uh, world's leading team endurance challenges. The Oxfam Trail Walker takes place in Australia, India, New Zealand, Spain, Japan, France, the UK, Belgium, and as I mentioned, Hong Kong. Globally, the events have raised more than $200 million for Oxfam's work in support of people living in poverty around the world. Oxfam Trail Walker is Australia's original 100 kilometre challenge and it takes place every year in Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney and in Perth. In 2014, around 2,000 teams took, place, uh, took part in the Oxfam Trail Walker uh, right across Australia and they raised uh, more than $7.1 million. You need to register as a team of four. You need to walk 100 kilometres in under 48 hours. And you need to fundraise to help overcome poverty and injustice around the world, as I already mentioned. You need to, to raise $1,400 just to register and enter. So in my case, it started by accident, as these things usually do. Over a cup of tea and a chat with colleagues at work, someone casually mentioned the Oxfam trail, trail Walker. They suggested that we should get a team together and that we should enter. The walk was described as a bit of a ramble. It would be a fun thing to do and of course, it would be a riot organising some fundraising activities and of course, we would be helping people much less fortunate than ourselves. So I thought, yeah, okay, I'm up for that. I'll give that a go. We formed our group of four and we started to get some fundraising happening because as I mentioned, you need to, to raise $1,400 just to, to register and enter. That's probably around the time that I realised that the 100 kilometres needed to be completed by each member of the team <laughs> and not 25 kilometres each as I had first thought. So there was I thinking that this would be a piece of cake uh, when all of a sudden, the reality became obvious and I understood really what I had let myself in for. OMG. <laughs> Anyhow, not being a person who shies away from a challenge, I figured that whilst this was bigger and would be harder than I had originally anticipated, I was still up to it. I could do it. And besides, I couldn't let my team down. So we raised the money, we registered our team, and we were successful in entering for the Oxfam Trail Walker. It's a very, very competitive process, as some of you may be aware. It's limited to 3,000 people, uh, and registrations are usually full within a couple of hours of the website opening. We had six months training time before we undertook the Trail Walker for real. And it was during the next three months that I really started to appreciate the power of what it was that we were actually going to do and how it would substantially change the lives of those less fortunate than ourselves and 
those who live in abject poverty and despair. We would literally be helping people to bring about positive change in their lives and as a result of our fundraising, we would be supporting Oxfam to promote education, teach skills to grow food, ensure access to clean water and provide orphaned and vulnerable children with food and meals. So this, this was more than just supporting a good cause. This was truly a real example of what the power of people could achieve. It was huge and I, I, I sort of felt myself caring about how I would be helping others and making a real difference in their lives and to their lives more and more until in fact this became the sole motivating factor for me. I trained for the walk most weekends, gradually increasing the distances I walked until I was able to walk 25 kilometres in about four hours and 50 kilometres in just over eight and a half hours. I really enjoyed the walking and I always felt a sense of achievement when I completed what I'd set out to do. The team did two or three walks together and this too was good because we got to know each other a little better along the way and we had a laugh and a giggle. My final solo training walk was 75 kilometres. This took just over 14 and a half hours and whilst I was absolutely stuffed at the end of it, I really felt confident then about being able to complete the 100 kilometres because another 25k would not be too hard. And I had pulled up pretty well. Sure, my feet ached, but I hadn't got any blisters and hadn't experienced any major issues. And so the big day arrived. 3,000 people or 750 teams all congregated at the start line at 7 o'clock in the morning. We started in groups of a thousand at 30 minute intervals. Ours was the last group to go. And there we were, we were off. We were full of excitement, we were full of hope. The camaraderie was just magnificent. There was laughter, there was anticipation, and there was a real sense of exhilaration enveloping us all. We hit checkpoint one after about three hours and we continued on to checkpoint two. It was midday when we arrived, and we had, a, we had completed 20 kilometres. We stopped for 10 minutes for a, for a quick toilet break and to swallow a cold drink, and then we were off again. We walked together as a team, and we had some banter with other teams who passed us or whom we passed on the way. We were all still really pumped, and the adrenaline was still flowing. The trail was well established, the weather was bright and sunny, and the countryside was very scenic. We were travelling well, and we were actually quite enjoying ourselves. At checkpoint three, we connected with our support team, who had set up our station with rugs and deck chairs, where we sat and ate the hot food that they had prepared for us. It was now about five o'clock in the evening, and the light was starting to disappear. It had cooled down quite considerably. So we changed into our night trekking gear, complete with headlights and waist lights. And after about an hour, we set off again. Now I think it was probably at this point that I realised I had made the most unbelievable and stupid mistake. <laughs> because whilst the trail up until now had been mostly on the level, aside from a couple of minor hills, what I saw before me now was mountains or at least what looked like mountains to me. Now sure, it was getting dark, but there was absolutely no mistaking the fact that we were now going uphill quite sharply and would be doing so for quite some time, as far as I could see. Of course, all of my training and the distance walks that I had completed had all been done on the flat. I hadn't included steep hills or mountains, and here I was now climbing Mount Dandenong. <laughs> All of a sudden, my confidence deserted me, and I felt the self-doubt begin to take its place. The climbing was hard work, and I had to keep stopping to get my breath. I could see my team members ahead of me, and whilst they were also working hard, they didn't seem to be struggling to the same degree that I was. They kept yelling words of encouragement, and they stopped every now and again to let me catch up. 
By now, it was completely dark and there was no lighting other than what our headlights or our waste lights gave out. And it was cold. The teams had spread out considerably and we were walking alone now more often than not. One of the stronger team members had gone out ahead and although we couldn't see him, we knew that we would catch him up at the next checkpoint. The mountain climb seemed to go on forever. It was becoming a real struggle for me. My spirits had sunk and I really wasn't sure that I was going to be able to keep going. And then at an altitude of 600 metres, suddenly we had reached the summit. I had done it. We had done it. We'd now completed 43 kilometres and it was 10 o'clock at night. We had a 30 minute break and then we headed off again. We were all starting to feel a little weary and there was only intermittent conversation happening. We tried to jolly each other on and we tried to crack the odd joke and talk positively about what we had achieved and how good we were going to feel at the end. Each of us knew that we had a responsibility to the other members of the team and none of us wanted to fail because that meant that the team would be disqualified. Of course, having ascended the mountain, we now had to descend the mountain and I can tell you that that wasn't at all easy in the pitch black and having felt instant relief at no more climbing after about 20 minutes of steep descent my legs and my knees were just about screaming. I would have given anything almost to go back up. And so on to checkpoint five, which we walked through without stopping. This was now a critical time for the team. Although we were now again on the flat, it was about three o'clock in the morning. And the only thing to be seen was that round circle of light from our waist lights on the ground in front of us. We were all feeling exhausted. The conversation had dried up, we walked in silence, and each of us was experiencing our own little slice of hell. I started to experience some hallucinations, seeing creatures on the outside of that circle of light. I desperately wanted to lie down, and I desperately wanted to sleep. I was feeling miserable, and for the first time, I really contemplated giving up. I felt the blackness on the inside as well as on the outside. We entered checkpoint six where we were met again by our support team who had set up camp in a paddock. Again, they had the deck chairs and the hot food ready for us. We spent an hour there and the whole time was complete and utter mental torture for me because I knew that we only had another 28 kilometers to go but I really didn't believe that I could physically make it. I spent the hour in silence because I actually didn't trust myself to speak. I thought I would just break down in tears and I'd be unable to get up again. It felt like the longest night of my life. I felt the full weight of responsibility on me, but at the same time, I knew that it would be just so easy to chuck it in. I could justify it because I'd given it a good go. And in the scheme of things, how important was it anyway? Well, that's when I reflected on what it was that I was actually doing this for. It wasn't for myself. It wasn't even really for my team. It was for the millions of people who every day struggle to live in a world of deprivation, hunger, illness and disease. I wouldn't have a clue how dismal their lives are and what they had to overcome each and every day. Only, only to look forward to more of the same the next day. What on earth did I have to complain about? I felt as, absolutely ashamed at my self-indulgence and my self-pitying thoughts. I was doing this walk to make a difference, and if I didn't complete it, I would be letting not only myself down, but so many others who believed in me, and ultimately, the people who really needed our help. It really was a moment of realisation. And even though I knew it wasn't going to get easier, I knew I just had to do it. 
This was my brief experience of the power of now, living in and for the moment, not thinking about the past or the future, but completely focused on the here and now. It was intense and it was consuming. I needed to stop being a victim of my own self, of my own despondency, and I needed to take charge of my emotions. I needed to make them work for me. And that's exactly what I did. It may sound easy, but it was an intense internal and emotional struggle for me. We left the checkpoint, and although my body felt incredibly weary and my back and my hips were absolutely hurting, I felt calmer, I felt mentally stronger and more determined. 30 minutes later, it started to get light and I cannot tell you what a blessed relief that that was. Because it was a new day and it was a special day, one where our team would cross the finish line and we could reflect on our achievement. There was one final checkpoint where we spent 30 minutes stripping off our night trekking gear and preparing for the, the final leg. We had 15 kilometres to go, and so I started to feel cautiously optimistic and even a little bit excited. We were actually going to do this. So off we went, and I vividly, vividly remember one of my fellow walkers pointing to this mountain and saying to me, the finish line is just over the top of that. <laughs> I just about vomited on the spot. I think I laughed hysterically because, you know, this had to be a joke. Who on earth had thought that this was a good idea? And why, you know, why would you, they make you walk up a mountain right at the last stage of the walk after 20 hours of continuous walking? When I later read the description of this part of the walk, it said, begin the steep ascent along the winding narrow goat track. <laughs> Stark rocky climbs and downhills are the theme of this final section. Well, they haven't got it wrong. But somehow I managed. I passed people who couldn't make that final climb who were distressed physically and emotionally. And my goodness, it was absolute torture. The sheer effort required was massive. But just before one o'clock in the afternoon, our team crossed the finish line. We had completed the 100 kilometers in 28 hours and 27 minutes. So what, you might ask? Well, there were three key learnings that I took away from that experience. Firstly, the power of now. As I've already indicated, I didn't prepare for the walk by doing too much research about what it involved. I instead got inspired by the notion of what my participation in the walk was about. The camaraderie, helping others, and the adventure. While at times during the walk, I lamented not researching the details of the walk more, I now appreciate that if I had, I probably wouldn't have got involved. I would have then missed out on what was an incredible personal experience, which resulted in so much personal growth and a sense of achievement. This is summed up by a quote from Eckhart Toll, the author of The Power of Now. Accept, then act. Whatever the present moment contains, accept it as if you had chosen it. Always work with it, not against it. Make it your friend and your ally, not your enemy. This will miraculous, miraculously transform your whole life. The second key learning relates to the power of humanity. As a nurse, social justice, kindness and humanity are values that underpin my profession and our values that resonate with me. These values are important drivers in my life. They assisted me and they gave me the determination to continue when I wanted to give up during the walk. Nurses every day are faced with challenges that at, at times appear insurmountable, but they don't give up. Why? 
because the power of humanity drives them on to assist those in the community and in their care. What does it mean to have humanity? It is the qualities that make us human, such as the ability to love, have, com have compassion, and be creative. And the third and final learning for me was the power of self. I learned a lot about myself on the walk, which contributed to my personal growth and my self-awareness. The key to unlocking your creative power is to know the self. It's important to self-reflect and to develop your self-awareness, but it's also important to have self-value. Don't let fear, self-doubt, and frustration hold you back. Value what you uniquely bring to each situation or challenge that occurs in your life. By doing this, you enable yourself to be the best that you can be. Thank you.